I can be healed Cause I'm so callous And now I can't feel What is up everybody? It is Patrick here with another episode of Around the Mission And today we are joined by RV. Let's try that again. Let's turn your mic on and try that again. Today we are joined by RV and Stephen Clayton and Steve. RV and Steve and RV and Steve. They're not just here for pretty decorations between me. No man, not even a laugh or anything there. Man, it's gonna be a long well, show here. Help you get there we go. Absolutely. So, there we go. No, no. Actually, they are here to talk about our discipleship program because they are two students that are going through our discipleship track. Um, so let's first talk. I think we've had RV on a couple months ago. Yes. Um, so just give us a quick um, Cliff Notes version because I think we talked about it before. Kind of your background. I, I know where you go to church, but some of the other people might not. So just, yes. you know, kind of uh, go through that. Uh, born and raised here. Uh, moved back in 99. Uh, started having problems when I was 21. Uh, amongst few things alcohol and drugs and other and more so than that I lost everything a lot of lots of times because of that and including being homeless because of it after getting out of jail I signed on here and started going back to Westview Baptist and you're, and you're a very faithful member of Westview yes. Baptist. I know yes. anytime I need to say, um, you know, uh, what y'all, what did the preacher talk about? Because I kind of kind of hop in and out of Westview a little bit. Or, you know, what are y'all doing on Wednesday nights and things like that? I know you always have the answer. Yes. Um, now, Steve, what about you? How did you matriculate to the wonderful town of Martinsburg? Well, I'm from uh, Aliquippa, PA, Pennsylvania, Pittsburgh area. Um, my wife passed away. Um, we were married for 20 years and she passed away three or four years ago. And that started a lot of problems for me. Um, I started stealing. I started uh, doing all kinds of things like lying and stuff that you really shouldn't do. Um, but um, it led me down to a path of uh, almost darkness, you know, because um, I lost uh, Recently, I've lost all my kids because I've made a lot of uh, stupid decisions and just wrong things, and I lost them all. Um, and like I said, I'm just on a bad path. And uh, like I said, when I started stealing, um, and I stole from my best friend, and that's what really stopped me. And that's what really, I needed help right then and there. So that's why I ended up here in this place. And um, I'm getting help with everything. I'm starting to get a little bit better with myself. I need a lot of help of trying to uh, forgive myself and patience and things like that in that nature. And, but anyway, I'm here and, um, and I attend to uh, XR Church uh, Crossroads. And I've been there and I've been faithful to them. I've only two months, but I've still been going every time I can. Uh, absolutely. In, in Crossroads, another, you know, we, we mentioned two churches here that are, um, you know, massive supporters, not just financially um, to the mission, but just encouragement for our men here. I mean, I know both uh, Crossroads and Westview are fall into that category. Yes, definitely. Um, so now the reason I wanted to talk to you all today is I want to talk about our discipleship track. We just rolled it out. Um, a couple months ago, and you guys have gone through the pre-course, and now you're what, two weeks in yes. to the, the the main course. Now the pre-course, um, we went through Twelve um, Ordinary Men by John MacArthur was the book we went through. What did you all think of that series, uh, the Twelve Ordinary Men, and, and how did that affect you all? For me, it was uh, pretty much a refresher course because I had been in and out of Westview, and to me, it was just more so a refresher course. You know, and plus I got to deep dive into more of who they were, and more so to, that I didn't know about each and individual of them. So, but when you say they were talking about the twelve apostles of Christ, yes. actually, we we only covered, I guess, eleven of the twelve because yes. we kind of uh, Judas. Nee, we'll put this one yes. in. I mean, he's worth definitely worth studying, and don't discount it. But we yes, did he's the eleven of the twelve. So. Discussion. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. uh, Steve, what about you? How did you? How did that course, the pre-course, really affect you? And what did you really take out of it when we did it? Um, 
I took out, out a lot, and I thought it was an amazing because, like I say, um, there were eleven men and, and who impacted the you know today. They impacted the world so much with uh, church life and with uh, your own relationship with God, and I think that's most important. But what I've also learned about these eleven guys, twelve guys. Um, they were just ordinary people just like us, really. I mean, uh, they all had the problems, they all done things that they shouldn't have either. They're, like I said, they're just the same as us, and, and all it takes is patience, I suppose, and uh, patience and a few other things of understanding, and you can actually impact the world if somebody gives you that. And that's what God does. He does, gives you the patience, He gives you the love, He gives you the care, everything. And as soon as you realize that, and you got somebody out looking for you, looking out for you like that, then you're good. Yeah, and I and I couldn't agree more. I, you know, I I taught one of the the courses, the, the, of the small courses that we did, and the, the the thing that I really took out of it is, it's called Twelve Ordinary Men for a reason. Yes. Because because we when we talked about this in the course that that, that you know I, I taught with you all of. Jesus could have gone to the temple and got the religious leaders and got the people that would have had the Ivy League degrees, I guess is how you could put it today. And, and, you know, he could have done that. And instead, he said, you know what, I'm going to build this ministry. I'm going to build my church because that's what the the course is about is those 12 men. Mm -hmm. Well, like we talked about in, in the first course was... Jesus, that, 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 you know, his ministry is split up into two, and the first year and a half is him ministering to, you know, the masses, yes. and then he starts training these 12 because he knew, knows he's about to die, and that's what kind of the last year and a half of his life is, is getting those people trained. And think about it, if you're, if you're leaving behind the legacy... If you're ready to see, if you know, you know, if you're Bill Gates or Steve Jobs when he was alive or somebody like that, and you know you're getting to leave behind a legacy... Who are you going to go to train to be behind you? Yeah, that's one thing that I wasn't really understanding mm -hmm. at first until I went through the through mm -hmm. the first one. And I'm thinking, this is why. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, Pastor Brian said he could, like you said, Patrick, he could have went to the varsity. He went with the JV football team. Well, he, he basically went with the Pee Wee League football team. Yeah, he, he, <laughs> yes. I think. But I'm giving them credit where credit's mm -hmm. due. And because of what they've done, we are now living that today. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and it's so powerful now. You all, you know, had the twelve. Ang um, oh, I almost said twelve Angry Men. Uh, good movie if you haven't seen it yet. But uh, <laughs> so Jack, the, the Jack Lemmon version is the one you want to watch. Um, but no, um, so twelve ordinary men. Then you all move to Black of these experiencing God, and obviously that's a very, it's a dramatic shift in tone. From, from MacArthur to, to Blackaby, and for those biblical scholars out there, you know that. What, how are you all, um, what do you all think of the, the, it's two weeks that you've been in the experiencing God, what's been your reaction to that so far? Either one. It's, uh, it, pretty much what it does is, uh, it helps you out even better because you can um, be trained to have your own not necessarily professional relationship with God, but a more in depth. Let's put it that way, um, and it's a little bit more uh, serious because you can actually have it like a, a, a kind of like an intimate talk with God and telling Him about just you know your own relationship. I I, I, I don't know. Um, I don't know what I'm, I I can't think of it. But anyway, but it's just more in depth. And it's more serious conversa uh, more uh, co conversations and stuff mm -hmm. that you can have with God and what you're really supposed to be doing. And it's a great, it's a great thing. And it's it just, like I said, I, that's all I can think of right now is it's just more in depth okay. uh, from the 12 ordinary men. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it's, it's uh, I don't know, just like more intimate, I suppose. But, you know, I say intimate and I'm thinking wife and father but it's not like that I'm well I mean I, I think that's that is a great word to use and, and we um so often like you said intimate goes to well, our minds go to something else but right. that that is exactly what God and Christ wants us to have that's that's a very good word to use and 
intimate relationship with him. It, it's, you know, the Song of Solomon, if you read it, is a love letter between two people. Right. And the reason it's in the Bible is because that's the type of relationship that God wants to have with us, that deep down intimate relationship. And I think you're right, the experiencing God helps you understand that, helps you understand that it's okay to have that kind of relationship with God. Yes, yep. and the Bible once states that we should have that one-on-one -on -one closeness which is what God and Jesus wants from us. And I think that going through this, the last two weeks and on, is going to challenge me even more. Mm -hmm. Challenge you how? Uh, challenge to set, actually sit down by myself and to do things out of my own comfort range. Mm -hmm. Now, I've stated once before, and I'll say it again, my favorite song is Psalm 23, mm -hmm. and it, for me it goes along with War Memorial Park. And I'm, I not try not to get out of going there, but I think that's what I'm going to wind up getting back more into, is going there to clear my mind and to actually try to have that personal one-on-one -on -one relationship with both God and Jesus in my life. Yeah, one, one of the things that we so often... Um, conf I, I, I confuse, I guess, is the best word to use for it is we have these great church experiences, Westview, Crossroads, where, wherever you may go, and your home church, you know, that that's what we, one of the things we encourage here at the mission is for someone to find a home church. We don't point and give you a list and say, these are the churches you need to go to. We like for you all to go out and find what you're comfortable with. You know, uh, a lot of people aren't comfortable with the style of Westview. They might prefer something else. That's fine. Nothing's to say one's right or one's wrong in terms of that. But after that experience, after that corporate church experience, we are called to also be alone with mm -hmm. God. And and you see this time and time again in the Bible. Christ, when, when he goes to pray to, to the Father, he says, you know, the disciples go this far, and then he goes further, further right. you know, Garden right. of Yosemite. He keeps coming back because they can't stay awake. But that indicates he's further away from them. When they go find him on the mountain praying, he's further away. In the early mornings, he goes away from everybody to do it. And we oftentimes, in our lives, because we all like to think we're busier than we actually are. <laughs> and, and I'm just as guilty of this as yes. anyone else. You know, it's right. I can't do this. Right. I can't. I, I don't have time to do it. Mm, no. And we need to make time. Yes, absolutely. Just like if it was your uh, husband or wife's wife said, if you got to make time during the day, then that's the same principle with God. You got to make your, mm -hmm. your own, you know, appointment to do that. Mm -hmm. You just got to do it. That's all there is to it. You know, you want to keep your marriage happy. You got to do the same thing with God too. Just the same. Right. That's how I feel. And, and, you're, and you're right. That that's we're called the bride of Christ for a reason. Right. It's you know the, the Revelations talks about the marriage yes. supper for a reason. That's what we are. It's building a relationship with God and with Christ. Mm -hmm. And you can't do that if you're surrounded by two hundred people. Sometimes. Yeah. If the yeah. only time you are in an experience or in communication with God is in a room full of 50 people or 200 yeah. people imagine ha trying to have a relationship with a human like that that's yeah. what I'm saying I yeah. was just thinking that you know like if you're having a, a relationship with a, a girlfriend or something and you got 200 people behind you and you mm -hmm. know how, how are you gonna have a, any intimate at all you know intimacy or whatever you know how are you gonna do that you know it's just it's just I don't know it's an, it's impossible to do. I Absolutely. mean, and, and and I think that is the one thing that you guys are seeing with this with, with experiencing God is yeah. it's helping. You know, the 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 twelve ordinary men gave you the broad stroke. You know, gave you the big thing. Now you're starting to get that funneled down into yes. it. Yes. And and yeah. once you get to was it fourteen weeks? I think it's what, twelve. Twelve, 12, 12 weeks. Yes. Once you get to that twelfth week, you really see. You know, oh, yeah. the, this is this is what you need to be doing, and and our hope, you know, when I say our, I mean the staff, you know, here at the mission, our hope is that you take these things that you're learning in these discipleship classes. It's called a discipleship class for a reason, 
it's it's not a college course. It's not a I'm going to go get credit course. It's not a I'm going to go through the workbook course and then I'm never going to pick it up again and do anything with it. It's called a discipleship course because you see it everywhere in, in our building now. You know, we have the new signs. We have the banners. We have the posters up. Thank you. Print, um, printing impressions right down the street here on King Street for doing those for us. But we have them everywhere. And what's it say the mission of the mission is? The foundation of the mission is? The Great Commission. Mission. Go and what? Make, Make disciples. disciples. That's why it's called a discipleship class because we want you all to come out of that class and say, okay, now I'm ready make disciples exactly yes mm -hmm. exactly so so are we i know you're head of housekeeping here at the mission and what do we need housekeeping wise uh, we need everything that you would use at your home bleach toilet bowl cleaner laundry laundry detergent liquid and powder mm -hmm. uh uh uh, Lysol spray. Lysol and, spray. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, All-purpose spray. Mm -hmm. Whatever you use at home, we use it at, at, on a yeah. bigger scale. And that's the, that is literally the best way to put it. If you use it at your house to clean with, we need it here, here. to clean with as yes. well. Because mm -hmm. uh, we, you know, we've talked about the numbers on the show before. We served 6,300 meals last month through the kitchen. Yes. And you know what? We got to clean up after that. Yes. But we got to clean mm -hmm. the dining room after that. We we housed slightly under thirteen hundred men in July here. Well, guess what? We got to clean the dorms up. We got to clean the bathrooms up. And okay. laundry so, as well. And so. and do laundry as well. Exactly. So if you have you know if you're looking for a way to support the mission, and you're not quite sure what it is we need, follow us on Facebook. That is That's the true. number one way to do it. These two guys both do it, and and it's. You know, you see posts from us probably eight or nine times a day of yeah. this is what we need. And then the other thing you can do is you can, uh, here comes the crass portion as I like to call it. And uh, Pastor Tim, our new uh, superintendent, is um, kind of helping me learn this. Um, we need money. All right. And there's no, <laughs> there's no other way to put it. Um, we, 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 you know, financial donations as great as food and laundry detergent and, and all those things that we need are. Um, I, I can't exactly go down to Allegheny Power and say, here's a bunch of bleach, can we pay our power bill? Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No. so, so uh, yeah, financial contributions are huge as well, and it can be as small or as large as you can do it. Go to our website, martinsburgunionrescuemission.com. You'll see a donate button right on the side of the site. You can set up a recurring donation because I know if I support a um, if I support a ministry, sometimes I forget that I donate this month or not. You know, did did, did I did I because I do everything with a credit card? Did I do it? Well, guess what? You can set it up so it automatically does it. Right through our website. If you want to set up a recurring donation, we can do it right through there. So, guys, any last words before we head out of here? I shouldn't say last words. Probably one of the best choice <laughs> words. But yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Too kind of too late, but you do catch yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, th thank you once again. Um, if you have recyclables, we can take them. And what I, what I mean by that is anything that can be recycled, basically, we can take. There's a small little corner of the plastic world that we cannot recycle and we can't take here but outside of that number one through sevens we take clothes shoes doesn't matter what condition they're in we can use them somehow here at the mission cardboard paper books shredded paper just the list goes on and on visit our website or you can email me to get the full list thanks guys for uh, taking the time out of your work schedule now go back to work no i'm just kidding <laughs> thank you all have a great day yes thank you thank you